This month there is a rather significant anniversary. It's the 50th anniversary of Pope Paul VI's encyclical Humanae Vitae on human life. And 50 years ago this month, the Pope issued that particular encyclical and it became obviously very quickly very controversial because it was a very much of a countercultural teaching that the Holy Father gave at that time. And it is one that has continued to, to be controversial in some ways, although many, and more, many, many people are discovering the truth of what the Holy Father had to say in that encyclical. You remember 50 years ago was the beginning of the sexual revolution. It was the beginning of a time in which there seemed to be that whole upheaval. There's the Vietnam War was going on, sexual revolution was taking place, things seemed to be crumbling around us at that time. And the Holy Father was under a lot of pressure at that time to accept the culture that divided human sexuality, the unitive and the procreative dimensions of human sexuality. But the Holy Father realized that that was going to be the key that the sexual revolutionaries were using. It was to convince people that there was not an, a true integrity to the human sexual act, but rather that it could, the unitive dimension could be divided from the procreative dimension. And once that division was promoted, and obviously it has been promoted rather effectively, there is a breakdown then in the true meaning of what the marital act is about and what about human sexuality is about. And so the Holy Father really spoke very counterculturally at that time because he was trying to emphasize the truth of natural law because he knows that the truth of natural law, once put aside, often lead to the violation of revealed law of God, the Ten Commandments. And that's exactly what has happened as a result of the sexual revolution and of that division of intimacy, of taking a, putting aside the unity, unitive or the procreative dimension. Those things are truly called to be together for the integrity of the human sexuality. Pope Paul VI at that time in the encyclical, and I remember reading it 50 years ago, he predicted several things that would come about if by the rejection of that union of those two dimensions of human sexuality. And he spoke about the fact that there would be a denigration of human sexuality, that there would be a greater emphasis upon pornography, that there would be really a degradation of women, that there would be challenges to the real meaning of what sexuality is about, that there would be a great rise in extramarital and premarital sexual expression contrary to the scriptures, that there would be also uh, a rise in divorces, that there would be a abnegation of responsibility on the part of many. And most of all, he pointed to the fact that once there was an acceptance of separating the unitive and the creative act dimensions of marriage and of the sexual act, that there would be at that time a demand for abortion. Because if there's a mistake, if there's an accident, there's a need to be able to remedy that. And we know the human toll that has been taken because of abortion within our own country and throughout the world. And how many lives, not just of the children, but how many lives of adults have been so terribly impacted by that 
terrible reality of abortion. So Pope Paul VI truly spoke a word of truth and a challenge to us. Obviously, there is a challenge to live out fully the Christian meaning and understanding of human sexuality. That that is a challenge for us because we live in a culture that does not really embrace that truth at all. And let's admit it, we're all affected by the culture within which we live. And so we are called to truly appreciate the real beauty of human sexuality, the real dignity of the marital act, that there would be a deeper union, a deeper realization of what our lives as human beings are truly about and the dignity and the sacredness of each and every human life. Pope Paul VI will be canonized this fall because of his courageous stand, among many others, for what he saw as the truth, the truth of God, the challenge that is there. He's been vilified in many ways over the years, particularly by those who embrace the sexual revolution. But he has challenged us to recognize the true deeper dignity, and, and I'm really happy and pleased that I think so many people today are reappreciating, are coming to a greater understanding and appreciation of the fullness of the dignity of human sexuality. Obviously, we're all weak human beings. And that, as much as the sexual revolution, has to do with the change in our culture. But nevertheless, that acceptance of that contraceptive mentality, that division between union and procreation, has had such devastating effects upon our culture and upon the lives of so many. And so we are invited, even as we celebrate remember this 50th anniversary, and maybe to revisit not only the teaching of Pope Paul VI in Humanae Vitae, but also the, the theology of the body that was so beautifully presented by Pope John Paul II, a great understanding of the deeper part of the mystery of human life, of human sexuality, of the dignity that is ours, of sharing in the very creative, loving power of God. And so it's a good time to revisit some of those dimensions of our life and to make sure that with our children, we're allowing them to know that yes, in our world, we are called to be countercultural. We are called to reject that which is false, that which is ephemeral, and instead to embrace that which is true that which is ultimately life-giving, that which truly enhances the dignity of the human person. That is our call, that's our challenge. And we pray that we can be open and be serious in reflecting upon the great mystery of the gift of human love and the fullness of that human love expressed in procreation, but in unity that is truly loving.